Okay, so this is a tutorial on the joints of the wrist and the hand. So we'll just take a look at um, some of the features of these joints and look at the ligaments and kind of movements that occur at these joints. So we'll start off with the wrist joint and we'll work our way distally through the various hand joints. Um, so the wrist joint is this joint here between the radius and an articular disc um, which lies at the end of the ulna and it attaches to the base of the styloid process. So it's between the radius and an articular disc at the end of the ulna and between the proximal articular surfaces of these three carpal bones, so the scaphoid, lunate and triquetral bones. So the wrist joint is a condyloid synovial joint so you get flexion, extension, abduction, adduction and you get um, circumduction which is a combination of all these movements so abduction is uh, movement in this direction adduction is movement towards the midline and flexion and extension so flexion is up this way and extension is back this way so it's just worth pointing out that the um, the styloid process of the radius is actually it extends further um, it extends more distally than the ulna styloid process so this actually means that if that the wrist joint is more limited in its range of movement in abduction because the styloid process is longer and it um, limits this movement a bit so because of the uh, more distal radial styloid process the hand cannot abduct um, as far as it can adduct because the ulnar styloid process over here um, uh, doesn't extend so far. So the, the wrist joint is a radiocarpal synovial joint so it involves the three carpal bones here the proximal carpal bones, scaphoid, lunate and triquetral and it involves the distal end of the radius and there's an articular uh, disc which lies over the ulna so it's a radiocarpal synovial joint. So let's just quickly take a look at some of the uh, ligaments in this area. So you've got l collateral ligaments, um, you've got ligaments connecting the radius and the ulna to the carpal bones, so you've got radiocarpal and ulnocarpal ligaments, and you've got um, ligaments on both sides, so you've got palmar and dorsal ligaments, and then you've got uh, ligaments at the end of the radius and ulna which connect the connect these two bones together so at the end of um, at the distal end of the radius and ulna you've got this ligament connecting the bones on the palmar surface so this ligament here is the palmar radio ulna ligament and if I just rotate the model around and we look at the dorsal surface you've got the dorsal radio ulna ligament then we've got the collateral ligaments, so we're looking laterally um, at the wrist here and you can see a ligament connecting the styloid, pro pro um, styloid process of the radius bone to the carpal bone. So this is the radial collateral ligament um, and if we look, so we're looking, if we're looking at the medial aspect of the wrist you can see the ulnar styloid process connects to the um, to the carpal bones, so this is the ulnar collateral ligament. So we can just see um, these ligaments here which run from the radius to the carpal bones and we're looking at the palmar surface so these are the palmar radiocarpal ligaments and likewise we've got um, palmar ulnocarpal ligaments so these run from the ulna bone to the carpal bones. So if we just look at these in a in a little bit more detail um, they can be broken down into two parts um, so the, the, the palmar radiocarpal ligament connects from the radius to the capitate bone so that's called this this particular ligament is called radiocapitate part of the palmar radiocarpal ligament and then you've got this other part which connects um, from the radius to the scaphoid and the lunate so this ligament is called the radio scapho lunate part of the palmar radiocarpal ligament. 
So it's the same with the the ulnocarpal ligament, the palmar ulnocarpal ligament. It's got two parts. One part connects to the uh, lunate, so it's called the ulnolunate part, and the other part connects to the triquetral bone, so it's the ulnotriquetral part. So what you really need to take away from this part is just that there's um, a radiocarpal and an ulnocarpal ligament and it's on the palmar surface so it's palmar palma, ulnocarpal and palmar radiocarpal ligament and they have two parts. So if I just rotate the model around we can just look at the back of the hand and there's only a um, radiocarpal uh, ligament on the dorsal surface so there's one dorsal radio carpal ligament so those are the those are the joints that you ha uh, sorry the ligaments that you have at the wrist joint so you've got um you've got two collateral ligaments you've got a radial and ulna collateral ligament you've got um you've got the uh, the two two ligaments at the end of the um the distal end of the radius and ulna so you've got the dorsal radio ulna and the palmar radio ulna ligaments and then you've got on the palmar surface you've got palmar radiocarpal ligaments and palmar ulnocarpal ligaments which are broken into those two parts and then on the dorsal surface you've only got a ligament connecting the radius to the carpal bone so you've got a dorsal radiocarpal ligament so now we'll just look at um, a few of the other joints that we have um, in the in the hand so after the wrist joint we've got the uh, carpal joints so these are the joints between the proximal and distal row of carpal bones and you can see here that there's quite there's quite a lot of ligaments here but there's quite limited movement at this joint um, but there is a little bit of movement and it helps to position the hand in abduction adduction flexion and extension so those are the the carpal joints between the uh, the various carpal bones so then next we've got the joints between the carpal bones and the metacarpals. So these are called carpometacarpal joints. So you've obviously got five of these joints. You've got um, joints between the carpal bones and metacarpals and metacarpals one to five. So the first one is a very interesting joint. So this is the, the joint between that is made at the thumb. Um, so this is the joint between metacarpal one and the trapezium and this is a saddle joint and it's much more mobile than the other two other joints between um, metacarpals 2 to 5 and the carpal bones so this is the this is the joint between the trapezium and metacarpal 1 um, and this is a saddle joint and it's a lot more mobile than the other other four joints so you get flexion extension abduction adduction and circumduction at this joint um, and there's a little bit of rotation as well so it's important to remember that this is this joint uh, is particularly special and it gives rise to the mobility of the thumb the other the other four joints in comparison don't really have that much movement there's just a little bit of um, a little bit of gliding movement at these joints um, so the ligaments we have uh, at, at in this area you've got um, palmar carpometacarpal ligaments and you've got um, palmar metacarpal ligaments so this is obviously the palmar surface if I flick over to the other side um, to the dorsal view we've got the corresponding ligaments so we've got dorsal carpometacarpal ligaments and dorsal metacarpal ligaments okay so so next we've got um, these joints between the metacarpals and the phalanges. So these are called metacarpophalangeal joints. So um, these joints are condylar joints um, and you get much more movements at these joints than the previous joints. So at the, at the metacarpophalangeal joints you get flexion, extension, abduction and adduction and you can combine all these joints to produce circumduction and then you've got a little bit of rotation at these joints as well so we'll just take a look at some of the ligaments at these joints so the metacarpophalangeal joints are actually quite straightforward so what you've got to remember is that there's a palmar ligament 
you've got medial and lateral collateral ligaments and you've got um, a deep transverse metacarpal ligament which links the palmar ligaments together so it's not actually demonstrated very clearly on this model so I'm gonna I'm gonna draw them on so that you can get a good idea of what I'm talking about so with this the model here shows the joint capsule but um, there's a ligament here called the palmar ligament um, which sits like this and connects the the bones at the joint together so this is the palmar ligament um, I don't really need to draw it on every single bone but I just have um, and these palmar ligaments are connected by the deep transverse ligaments so you can see these ligaments connecting the palmar ligaments together um, and you've got three deep transverse ligaments and it's important to, to note that there isn't actually one between between metacarpal 2 and 1 um, because this would really restrict um, restrict movement and then on the sides of the on, on the sides of the the joint you've got collateral ligaments so you've got medial and lateral collateral ligaments so just to run through that again you've got a palmar ligament You've got deep transverse ligaments which link the palmar ligaments together. And then you've got uh, collateral ligaments, so medial and lateral collateral ligaments. And these help to reinforce the joint capsule. So finally, we've got the interphalangeal joints. So you've got two of these. So you've got a proximal interphalangeal joint and a distal interphalangeal joint. And they, these are really easy to learn about because they've got the same setup as the metacarpophalangeal joints. So you've got the palmar ligaments, which sit uh, sit like this, um, and then you've got the collateral ligaments, which lie either side. So you've got medial and lateral collateral ligaments. Um, and you don't get as much movement at these joints. Obviously, you've just got flexion and extension, so they're simple hinge joints. So that's the um, joints of the wrist and the hand. Um, I hope that's made things a bit, bit easier to understand for you.